the LAPD may not be able to charge him, but we are able to shun him. And he should be treated like the leper, the social leper and criminal he is. Get comfortable as Jennifer Lopez has revealed some very intimate details about her history with Diddy and Chow. These revelations are sure to make your tea very hot revealed shocking claims that she had been abused by her ex-boyfriend. I was checking out your videos, right? And you told a story about, you know, a female giving puffy fellatio while Jennifer Lopez was upstairs. Yeah, I said that on one of my programs. Yeah. What happened with that? Nothing new. We had just came from, uh, Jennifer had just gave him this hell of a day. I mean, like, we went to the Miami Hurricanes game. Uh, was it? Yeah, we went to Miami State Hurricane. We was on the field while they were playing and stuff. And um, he gave them a party at 321 in Miami. She rented a club, gave him a party, gave him this big backyard party, dinner and everything like that. Then gave him a party at the club. And then we came back, one of his, uh, what's his name, Slam has set it up, because Jennifer went upstairs. And Puff said, yo, Gene, watch the door. Don't let nobody come through the door. And uh, I said, all right. And Slam set it up. And I wanted to say it was Korean, but I'm not sure it was her. But it was supposed to be somebody that was either up to her level in fellatios, or it was her. I'm not sure. And while Jennifer was upstairs, he was down there getting a fellatio from her. Did she ever find out? She know now. And you said the female name was Karen? Yeah, Superhead. Oh, okay, Karen Stephens. You gotta say the full name, man. Yeah, I thought it was her. Slam set it up. Yep, Slam set it up for right, right there. Yep. It wasn't, it was nobody. It was somebody that was, I think I, I'm for sure I'm almost sure it was her. I'm almost sure it was her. Yeah, that's a wild story, man. So Puffy, he was getting hair from, you know, Superhead, and Jennifer Lopez was upstairs and she had no idea. None whatsoever. Was this after or before she did the 16? Nah, 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 she wasn't known. Yeah. Yo, let me just tell you something. Puff was like Pop. He, he had first dibs on a lot of chicks. before they got to the rest of the rappers and everything like that. I'm sure it was her. I, I could be mistaken, but nah, I think, it, yeah. But she she messed with him and, and she, she said she messed with him before. But I'm sure after his party in Miami, that was her. And I'm like, at the time, our relationship, I was like his big unk, so I'm, I'm not gonna let him do stupid stuff to get himself in trouble or me in trouble. So a lot of that stuff that is probably happened after I left, you understand, other than, you know, the swinging stuff that he did with Kim and other guys and everything. Okay, talk, talk to me about that a little bit. I don't know what you want to know about that, Cam. You know, you're talking about you, this is your girl, this is your woman. She didn't even have Christian at the time, but you bring other guys in with her and then sometimes be up just other girls and her, then other guys, then, then guys and girls, and they swinging, they doing their thing, bro. You know, I guess that's what the industry is. They, they like to swing like that, you know. The rock stars do it. I guess the rappers was doing it too. Was that stuff surprising to you, or were you used to it being around oh, yeah. the business? I'm not gonna have, Cam, that's surprising to anybody. You know, who gonna have their girl having sex with another man because you can have sex with their girl, or y'all switching and y'all, nah, man. That's some, that's some beyond me. But I know it happens. Mark Curry has said in an interview that 
Puff broke Kim Porter's nose when they were fighting on a yacht. Did you ever see anything like that or hear about anything like that? I, I, I've never seen Puff put his hands on Kim like that other than snatching her and grabbing her or something like that. But as far as, no, I heard of the nose breaking. That was something that I heard of that. I had seen somewhere that, you know, he treated J-Lo different than he treated Cassie and Kim. Well, I know that he, I never seen him with the play fight like he used to do with Kim, cause that's how it would start off. He would start off with the play fight, hitting her with pillows and all like that. I guess that love tap, I don't know that, I wasn't into that. I've, I've never been into that with women. So he would start off like that. Then it would always uh, probably go up to something, a higher level or where she wanted him to stop playing with her like that. Cause he may have gotten a little too rough for her. But I never seen him do Ms. Lopez like that. And uh, uh, when, when uh, J-Lo was around, I used to always just uh, call her Ms. Lopez. Um, he would do the flirtation and, and, and like have a lot of girls and girls around and then try to play her like that. But, and uh, I put in my book one particular night where uh, she was in the stu we, we was in the studio and a lot of girls was up there and J-Lo got, you know, Miss Lopez got mad and she went home and she put on some jeans and sneakers and put her hair back into a little bun and a ponytail and she came back to the studio and Puff had a new song for her cause she was heated cause, and he got rid of all those girls that was in the studio. So he never tried to, you know, straight up, you know, talk to her crazy or anything around people, never. I never even heard him raise his voice to her. Mm. Okay. Totally different. Totally different. Thing. Totally, totally different. But you, you got to realize it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a, it, it, with, with Kim them and most other people that I've seen them be around, they depended on him. Ms. Lopez didn't depend on him. You know, she had her own. One thing I've seen a lot of people say was uh, they want to hear from Young Miami. She's standing by her man. That's what she said, right? I'm standing by my man. Did she say that? I, I must have missed it. Yeah, I think she said that when they was over in London, that she's standing by her man. That's crazy. I mean, you know, he, he might not be treating her like that. I don't know, it, it, it's different when a lady says she like to be peed on and she dealing with somebody. That came out her mouth. Right, I remember. So you ain't gonna give her what she like? <laughs> <laughs> so she might be actually into all this stuff or not, you know, not all of it, but some of the stuff that- May not bother her. It, it might not bother her and she might actually like it. She can go get her Birkin bag the next day. Get ready, because what you thought was predictable is about to take a wild turn. The plot thickens, the suspense rises, and nothing is as it seems anymore. Just when you think you figured it out, bam, everything changes. This isn't your usual story. It's about to get a whole lot more intense. So stay with me, because the next move is going to flip the script completely. Expect the unexpected, because what's coming is going to blow your mind. Hold on, because the real action is just getting started. You know, Suge and Diddy had this huge, you know, feud going on. You know, there's this picture that recently came out of Suge playing with Diddy's son. You know, what do you think when you seen that? We had saw this picture and it wasn't the ones that was recently released. It was a picture of Suge hugging Misa and Misha having Justin in her arms, and the thing said, what the East Coast won't take care of, the West, the caption said, what the East Coast won't take care of, the West Coast will. Puff saw that and almost blew a stack in his head. A vein came across his head. I mean, like he was, he was heated. 
and uh, he got on the phone. You know, I guess he was trying to reach Misa. He was trying to, you know, he he, he was he was going crazy. And uh, recently, I had told that story on another platform, and I told the story before, and then somebody said they don't believe it. They didn't, it didn't happen. I was just capping all this other stuff, and now the photo gets released by I don't know who, and Suge Knight is playing Play Daddy on the floor with Justin. And somebody's taking the pictures of him and everything. You know, I know, I know, I know Puff was, Puff was probably, I don't know if he, he probably was still mad at that today to see that. Cause he probably didn't know those pictures existed. In the lawsuit, it talks about a situation where they heard about Suge being at a restaurant and Puff was, they, they allegedly went to grab some guns and, and go after him or something, man. Is there, do you know anything about that situation? The part I know about the situation, it wasn't the fact that Shugman was at the restaurant. D-Rock, Big's man was at the restaurant and they had D-Rock trapped in the restaurant. Now this story came from D-Rock himself because I was wondering, I was trying to have a sit down with D-Rock and Puff you know, and I wanted to have a sit down with D-Rock first and let him know all what happened and how did Big end up going to the party when I told y'all not to go to the party. You know, and that's the party that Big got murdered at. So D-Rock told me how Puff, you know, loaded up some guns and everything and had one of the girls, and I didn't know it was Cassie at the time, you know, his girl came into the restaurant with the guns, giving it to him so he could be safe from whatever was gonna go down or whatever they thought was gonna go down, you know, with Suge and his people. So that part was true, cause that was told to me by the person who was in the restaurant. Was that the only situation like that that you're aware of? About what? About Puff and Suge. Man, the times we saw Suge, you gotta realize, you know, I was part of Black Hands and Slick in the Family. The time I saw Suge, Suge would never, I never had a problem with Suge. You understand what I'm saying? So, it was never no issues. I seen Suge at the Super Bowl. It was no problem, no issue with Puff. We saw Suge in the back of the House of Blues and Tupac was alive at the time. Tupac was in a white top, a, 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 a white, drop top uh, uh, Rolls Royce, Bentley, whatever that is. Suge was in a red one. We rose up to Pac and uh, uh, Puff tried to speak to Pac. He like, yo, what up Pac? Pac looked at him and turned his head. Didn't say nothing to him, got right back on his phone. And the dude in the, uh, in the back of uh, uh, Puff at the time was named Riz. Riz said, yo, F him. Speak to Suge, Suge is the boss, right? So then Puff said something to Suge, he said, yo, what up Suge? He said, what's up? He said, yo, you think we got any problems out here? Suge said, I don't know what no, I don't know no problems that y'all have. You think we good out here? He said, you should be, I don't, you know. Suge just, I don't know any problems you got, bro. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. And Pac was alive then. You understand? We drove off. We had a reporter with us. I think he was from the, he was from either Rolling Stones or that other big uh, magazine. Hold on to your seats because what I'm about to share is going to leave you stunned. You've been waiting for this and trust me, it's bigger than anything you could have imagined. The truth is about to come out and it's going to change everything you thought you knew. This isn't just any reveal, it's a game changer. The kind that will have you questioning everything. So get ready, because this is the moment where everything shifts. The secrets are out and the reality, it's going to be shocking. So Hilton, she came out with a statement saying that she seen the video and when she seen the video, it brought back her own trauma and she knows how Cassie feels. Wow, that was big there. That was big in so many ways, man. I was catching flat, talking about 
I never heard of that before. I never heard that Puff ever put his hands on me, sir. You just making shit up. If you saw it, you know why you ain't do nothing about it and see it. And, and I always say, Mighty, when I heard something, somebody, and these are the people who were saying it. I always say that. I don't try to claim everything. If I see it, I'm gonna tell you I saw it. If I want it to be known. But I said, I heard he beat us so bad, she had to... Misa was a little thing then too, man. I mean like, Misa was a little thing. Beautiful little woman, but she was, Misa was like, cause I used to body, when I left Bad Boy, check this out. And people don't know this. When I left the last, when I stopped working for Puff, I started working for Misa. Misa called me up, yo, Gene. I'm scared. I'm afraid. I don't. I be wanting to go to parties. I want to be. I be out, and I know, Puff or nobody gonna do anything if I got you with me. I used to bodyguard Misa. She didn't go out all the time. She was trying to get her business up. But when she wanted to go to places and be out and be seen, I was with her. You understand? Misa. Is like, you know, she may be Asian descent, but she like one of those strict, like those down south mothers. <laughs> Yo, she was, she did not play. I don't know how Justin got to do some of the things that he's doing now, probably because he went to live with his daddy, but his mama didn't play that. I used to bodyguard her. And that's because she was afraid to be out because he didn't want, she didn't want if she was out with somebody or she was out doing her thing, she didn't want him to say or do anything to her or nobody else. It was for other people too. You understand? So this only proves that the information that I heard somebody and they told me that Puff beat him because of the Eric Sermon. He thought she was dating Eric Sermon or Eric Sermon had dropped him out. He was, he was in a white Mercedes Benz. He had dropped her off. He got mad and started beating on her. When he ran, he, when he caught up with her. This only proves that that one thing happened and some other things probably happened. Cause she said that it only brings back her own trauma, bro. People don't understand, man, when things like that happen to you, man, and you see it happen to other people, that, what, what's that, PDST or PSDT or something like that? That shit is a MS. Hey, yo, yo, and yo, it was so crazy, man. You know, the way they explained it, that, yo, <laughs> he beat that woman till she was crawling up under a car, man no matter how small she was. She was crawling up under the car, man. You got to be real scared, man. <laughs> That's crazy. I know it ain't funny, but it's crazy. He was beating her till she ran up, up under the car, man. Whoa, man. So it got that bad, man? The way they was explaining to me, man. And I'm like, yo, did you? I'm The first thing I, first thing I wanna know, then what did somebody do? Yo, people was grabbing him, but he wouldn't stop. And if you know Puff, Puff wasn't no, like, no dude that, he was no weak guy, nothing like that. You understand? I seen Puff slam the many of guys. I used to laugh. You know, guys used to come up there and they try to grab him or whatever like that. Puff used to wrestle and play football. So I seen him grab some, some, some street dudes that thought they was like that. And he put them on their back quick. No diddy. Yeah, that's crazy. And when you was doing security for her, was he controlling? Like, was he worried about where she was going and keeping tabs on her? He couldn't control her. He wouldn't, he wouldn't, he... I had left Bad Boy. That would be the last thing that Puff would try to do is come and confront me or confront Misa when she with me. You understand? And plus he wasn't doing right by her, his own child at that time. He wasn't doing right by uh, Justin with Misa at that time. 
So my whole thing about it, he wasn't gonna do that, not at all. That would be the last thing he would have did. We don't play those games. If I'm protecting Misa, Misa is protected. From babies, from baby daddies, from boy, ex-boyfriends, from whoever. My job is to get her back in her car safe and make sure she get on that highway and get home. And that's what I did. So he wasn't going to do that. Not at all. I want to ask you, Ray, how you feel about some of these news outlets reporting that, you know, Jennifer Lopez, she was talking about Diddy when she said in her new documentary that she was in an abusive relationship. I personally don't believe it was Diddy. I personally, because I've never seen him in a situation other than pillow fighting or like that. And I know that he used to do that sometimes. To, 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 to mess with the, the younger girls and the girls he used to deal with, you know what I'm saying? But I never really seen them act that manner with Miss Lopez, with Jennifer, not at all. I've never seen him in a, a, a situation whereas that I, I could believe that Miss Lopez was hit by him or roughed up by him at all. So what was he doing in a relationship that you disagree with? It's, it's, there's no relationship I don't think is perfect, but I um, I don't think that, you know, like when we, just for instance, we, we would come back to the studio and it'd be a bunch of girls in the studio. And he would try to convince her that because he's a superstar, he has to have a lot of girls around like that for his image. But Ms. Lopez has been around the block a few times. You know, she'd been on major networks, you know, stars, dealt with individuals and shit like that. So, you know, what I didn't like is that they used to tag team her on, 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 on discussion about these girls and stuff that used to be around they used to be disrespectful and they would try to be disrespectful to her. And I would be put in the middle of that bullshit sometimes. And then she'd be looking at me like, yo, Gene, when in fact, I can't do anything because he's my principal. You understand what I'm saying? That was it. I've never seen, uh, Puff rough her up or had a situation where she came out the room or she came out the room looking a certain way like she had been hit or, or, or she was upset in that manner. No. Nah. So tell me a situation where she was violated by a female. Well, we was in the studio and one of the young ladies was overheard saying that she ain't all that. So then Jennifer was about to go at her. So Puff told me to take her home. So I took her home on this particular night and she went, got the jeans on, put her hair back in a little ponytail, the little bun thing, you know, had the jean jacket on. She might have Vaseline on her ears or whatever like that, sneakers. And she came back to the studio and Puff had got them girls out of there. You understand? She act like she was, she act like that she was ready to do something. So then Puff had gave her a song. So they worked on the song. Then we end up going to a club called Eugene's and met up with Destiny Child and Jay-Z and Dame Dash before we ended up at the cafeteria later on that night. But she was gonna get that girl to the business. From your point of view, right, did you see any signs that Diddy and J-Lo was going to break up? From your point of view, did you see the writing on the wall? Well, when, when I saw a lot of people, a lot of investigators following us, you know, I knew they were private eyes because I worked for a private eye company at that time also. That was a lead investigation on 29th Street between... Was that 10th, 10th and 11th Avenue? It was on 29th Street. Elite investigation. So 
you know a lot of the private eyes, different private eye companies. You work with them on different, uh, with us, different other clients. One time we had Sharon Stone. So I knew a lot of the guys and I saw a couple of guys who worked a couple of jobs with me before watching us. So I know a couple of guys that were watching us. So I was trying to tell Paul, yo, you know, we got PIs following us. You know what I'm saying? So it was only certain reasons if they was following us, if they was PIs, somebody was trying to find out something on us. And it usually be, they have usually be following us, not when we're going to a big party and stuff like that. They'll just be following me and Puff, Puff on our, on our, days that we were out and about and we were going certain places so either somebody hired private eyes to follow us on behalf of jennifer lopez or she did but why do you think her and her team would do that somebody hired private eyes to follow us it could have been her manager benny medina he didn't like puff you understand so i i could tell when in the first meeting when I was around him and Puff, when I was in the first meeting with around him and Puff, we was in this meeting, and I could tell how he was talking to Puff. You know what I'm saying? That he didn't so much care for Puff. So anything to get Jennifer away from him, I think he was capable and ready to do it. And you said J Lo mom didn't like Puff either, right? She his, his mom couldn't stand. His mom never took a present, a gift. If if, if, she, if if she needed air to breathe, she wouldn't take his last breath. Do you think Diddy could come back from this? Because a lot of people saying it's over for him. Oh, it is over for him. Come back to where? To be in the entertainment business? Listen to me, man. And I don't want to bring this guy's story up because it's old. And I know he's trying to live past it. But I'm going to bring it up anyway. Ray Rice. His wife spit in his face and he did what he did on that elevator. He ain't played one football game after that. Nowhere that I know of. He may have went overseas and played or something like that. I don't know that to be true, but he didn't play in the NFL a hell of a running back. He ain't played not one down in the NFL after that. No endorsements. Nobody's going to have anything to do with old boy. And when they come out with this other stuff, he going to come back to work. I won't. I wouldn't be surprised if he do the ultimate sin, his suicide. If he because bruh. He's so he's such a narcissistic that he couldn't stand not being somewhere and not being seen. His whole life, his whole career was about him being seen in the public. It was about him, you know, taking everybody else's dreams and making them his. And now him nor his kids would profit from anything from Bad Boy or Sean Puffy Combs again. His kids is gonna suffer behind this. Wow, man, that's crazy to hear, man. And you knowing Diddy, you think it's a good chance he might take his life? He was talking about taking his life at the City College thing. Yo, D Ferg, ASAP Ferg father, Say, yo, man, we gotta watch him, man. This nigga talking about killing himself. I say, so let him. If you're that weak, I say, let him. And he said, Eugene, why you say that? I said, man, listen to me, man. He ain't no good to nobody if he talking about hurting himself. His life don't belong to him. His God. What he should be trying to do right now is work his way towards God now. For real, and not that devil we've been worshiping. That those people got him believing, you understand? That's the true God. Because everything from what I know, 
since I've been around him, you know, everything that's gone forward has been that of the devil. The drugs, the alcohol, the partying, everything has been of the devil. And he's been leading not only himself, our people, into some kind of damnation through his actions. Yeah, I'm just in disbelief, man. I mean, to see his downfall. I mean, he's been on a long run, man. So, you know, to see this is crazy, man. I mean, how long has he been famous? Nah, so you gotta realize he didn't get his fame until after he made that, you know, remember, you gotta remember this, Mighty. I said he made the atmosphere for Pac to die. He made the atmosphere for Big to die. He created the atmosphere, you understand, for Suge Knight to go to jail because that's what came out of his mouth. So that didn't happen. His fame didn't really, he didn't really come famous until after the death of Tupac and the Notorious Big, brother. So that's like 97, he went on that whole bad boy tour with the number one song in the world, Missing You, where he stole the, the thing from Sting and the, and the music from uh, Source Money, the, 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 uh, the lyrics from Source Money. Didn't even wanna pay that man his money. Waited all those years to pay that man his money. He was stealing people dreams, man. He's the cause of a lot of people death and people ain't gonna see it the way I see it. But when you steal somebody dreams, Black Rob probably could have changed his life. And trust me, you won't believe what happens next. Probably could have changed the way he thought. Probably could have changed the way he was doing business if he wouldn't have stole G Depp from him. He, if he would have treated Craig Mack in the correct way and not try to steal his music, use him in the way that he used Craig Mack to, uh, um, to catapult the notorious big. Craig Mack's life could have been changed. If he would have never set up the atmosphere and had big out there in California, and bring it big to that party. The notorious big life may still be here. If he wasn't trying to put the bloods against the Crips, well, they was already against each other anyway, but use the Crips. Maybe Tupac would have never had that altercation. But if if ands and buts were candies and nuts, like I always say, Christmas would be every day. And I understand that. But he set up the atmosphere for a lot of people. Whoop! Set up the atmosphere between him and BMF. Come on, man. They say one day you gotta pay the piper. That's why he getting that smoke. Sauce Money, you brought his name up. He had an issue with Diddy? For years, Sauce Money is the one who wrote uh, that Missing You, bruh. The number one song for a long, it was a number song, one song on Billboard. I think he did more, more, more than Elvis or anybody. Probably Whitney Houston. But Whitney Houston's the only one did like Triple Diamond or something. But that source money was like the number one song and that's what catapulted him into stardom. He didn't pay source money for years for years and Sauce Money wouldn't say this, but I know this to be true. He did a diss song on Puff, sent it to Jay-Z. Jay-Z called Puff and said, yo, my man, you don't want that diss song to come out about you. This is true story. I think Puff sent him $100,000 or something like that. And that was, oh, but I, that could have been about eight to 10 years after that came out. <laughs> you know how much money he made and show money and everything he did on that? It's crazy. 
But the only person who was getting paid off that was Sting. So what do you have to say about this comment down your thoughts right now? And make sure to give this video a like and also subscribe to the channel to stay updated in future. Until then, keep exploring.